Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing R. Penquin in the five minute pool on ICC. He opens with d4. Uh, let's play g6 this time. I remember playing this player in one of my very early videos. Like, I'm talking, like, maybe like my first or third video or something I did on ICC. So, <laughs> for old time's sake, R. Penquin, we're playing again. So, if they move the knight, I might play bishop takes c3 check and double up the pawns. This is a position I've reached a lot in bullet. Don't know that I've played it in Blitz before, but... Okay, he plays e3. Looks pretty normal. I might take and then play for knight f6 followed by d5, but I could also just play this position kind of standard, uh, like knight f6, d6, etc. Let's play knight f6 to start at least and keep it flexible. Yeah, bishop e2. I think I'm going to take and do the d5 move. Change the structure just a little bit. The bishop on e2 is passive, so... I feel okay in offering like a transition to a Panna Bafanik like position. Check. Queen a4 check. Okay, so that looks like an attempt to misplace my pieces a bit. Bishop d7, they're going to play queen b3. Okay, well, I kind of have to play this move. So queen b3, maybe bishop c6. And just hold d5 and also defend b7. Looks fine. Yeah, they might try to play to cramp this bishop in the long run, but... I'll have some counterplay against that. It's not a completely one-way street. Maybe pawn b6 on the next move. Assuming white castles or something. Yeah, pawn b6 here could be good. Just to break up the queen side. Also, there's knight e4. Knight e4 attacks d4. But let's start with b6. I think I like the idea of trying to take down that pawn first. Hmm... I'm going to take with a queen. Am I? Queen takes, queen takes, takes, bishop c7. Let's take with a pawn instead. And then we'll go knight e4. They're going to have to waste a tempo castling, so I know I'm always going to get a tempo back with them doing that. Yeah, let's do this. Pre-move this capture. I'm not threatening knight d2 because the bishop does cover that square. Maybe here bishop d5, bishop c4. That looks pretty normal. Ooh, also there's bishop a4. I'm glad I saw bishop a4 because I was about to play bishop d5. <laughs> but something about the queen rook alignment spoke to me. So yeah, this move is going to win the exchange. Also, maybe the pawn on a2 will be under attack. Okay, white just resigned. Yeah, he didn't bother playing it out. Quick game, what can I say? 16 move victory with black. So this move order, I mean, I know white's developing normally, but I think this is a suboptimal move order for white. Probably to get an advantage here, they pretty much have to play d5 and enter a Jinji Indian if black wants it, or a Benoni, something like that. Because I really don't see knight f3 giving black any headaches after take and take and follow by knight c6. Now, if they had played knight c2, Check. we get to do this, and I like playing against these pawns. You can go, for instance, queen a5 and pressure these pawns in the style of a, an Imzo Indian almost, attacking the doubled pawns. So e3, knight here. It's also interesting to play, like, potentially, let's say, d6, followed by knight h6 to f5, and try to attack the knight that way. That might be just a, a random idea, but... It's not out of the question for black to bring the knight to f5, as opposed to the usual f6 square. Sometimes you see that in English positions, black playing knight, h knight h6 to f5. But instead I played knight f6, he played bishop e2, and then I decided to take. Yeah, had I played something like, let's just say, castles, castles, d6, I'd be looking to continue with bishop d7 and rook c8. And it's um, kind of a... A Meroxy formation, but one where white does not have a pawn on e4. Which actually, in some respects, may help them, because they could play bishop f3, and their bishop will have better prospects than usual, since there's no pawn blocking it on e4. But I took on d4 and then changed the structure up a little bit. I'm going to add the engine right here. Check. So he went queen a4, check. I think in view of the game continuation, this doesn't really bother black too much, getting my bishop out here. There's some fear that the bishop is restricted on this square. It's kind of a big pawn in between the b7 pawn and the d5 pawn. And especially when they play c5, 
long in the long run, I don't want my bishop sitting here forever. Uh, but this takes time for them, and they're going to have to castle. And also, when this knight moves, the attack on d4 has to be addressed. So, all in all, I think this is okay for black. Hmm. And now here, much better according to the engine was knight d7. So making a knight move, but not to the center where we offer a knight trade. Here we're threatening bishop takes d4, and also I think the computer likes the possibility of e5, trying to get rid of the d4 pawn, and in doing so, maybe destabilize the c5 pawn. So let's say we follow the engine's top move, rook d1, defending there, and then e5. Let's just say pawn takes, and now knight takes. Yeah, this does look pretty good for black. We're attacking the queen. This knight might find a nice home on e6. Maybe we'll go d4 as well. Maybe even we can just outright attack the pawn on e5. Yeah, there's also this idea as well. Advance and open the bishop. That might be a better way to exploit black's slight lead in development compared to what I did. So I played b6. I wanted to get rid of the c5 pawn. But in doing so, admittedly, I do take on a weakness on b6. I thought about queen takes for a second, but you know what I didn't, I didn't like is bishop c7. But now that I think about it, probably moving the knight is a good counter to this as well. Even knight d7, if I had to play knight d7, that just defends the pawn and opens the bishop. So I took with the pawn instead. White castled, I played knight e4. Yeah, so white should be fine here. It's just they kind of blundered into that skewer. Probably white has to be a little careful, though. I mean, I have some nice activity. And if they can't put a rook on d1, then there is a question how they're going to defend this pawn. Would rook d1 be acceptable here, with the idea being that if knight takes, they could take with the queen and thereby bypass the bishop a4 problem? Looks like it. Yeah, the engine says this is only very slightly better for black, probably not anything to write home about. Okay, so even though we quickly won this game and they just resigned after bishop a4, um, still some improvements to be made. I think this is the benefit of looking through your games. You know, if there's one takeaway you have from this, it's like, don't just automatically chalk up a win in your head and say, oh yeah, I played perfect, especially a quick win. Like I, I did everything correct. Because you can see already here, there's a few moments where I could have played better. And if you want to improve in chess, I really think you have to be relentlessly uh, self-critical and relentlessly determined to find the best move, even in games where you win uh, without a fight, seemingly. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.